Hi there, Natalie with you today to show you a fun idea how you can create a one of a kind layout from sketch using Altenew New dies. And I'm gonna use some of the latest dies that Altenew New are released in uh, January. And the main, uh, my background is gonna build using the grid die. And I love linear dies. This is probably one of a fave, just cause it has the straight lines. It works perfect in a card. It's sized to an A2 card that is a four and a quarter by five and a half in height, which is just makes a perfect background. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of setting my idea. I know that I want to create a background that has color, but also has the linear quality. And that's what I pulled this die. I want to have those lines, but I don't want to cut the die completely. And what I mean by that is I'm going to stencil it onto my papers. So I know that I'm going to need at least three, four panels of the grid for my background. So I'm starting with just like I said, you're gonna see that I'm creating kind of a soft diagonal on the paper. This is just the idea that I have working on my mind. And then I wanna start adding color. Now I wanna combine teals and blues slash um, kind of a reddish tone on the blue. So I'm gonna use inks from the Seashore collection and also from the Northern Shore collection. Now I'm starting, like I said, I cut around four pieces of Nina Solar Crest white cardstock. This is 80 pounds. I didn't wanna go with a heavy uh, for this. And I'm starting by using my ink blending tool just to add color to one of the panels. I am starting with the Seashore inks and this is Volcano Lake. You're gonna see that I, I'm just dabbing my ink blending tool on the ink pad and then I'm gonna go on a circular motion onto the cardstock. I'm starting the motion outside of the panel so that I don't get those harsh bristle lines. Then I'm just gonna continue going on a circular motion just to create the nice um, color blending on the panel. Now when I've reached around half point of the card, I'm going to switch into a darker tone. I'm going with Lagoon. I want to create kind of a um, ombre effect on the background. So going from the light to the darker shade. And again, I'm starting with the darker shade on the opposite side of the panel. So that when the two colors meet in the center, there's a nice uh, fuse of the two colors. Again, all I'm using is my ink blending tool and I love them. One of my favorite things to use. And once I'm happy with what my panel looks like, I'm going to set it aside because I want to make sure that the ink sets completely before I can handle it. So you're going to see that I'm making sure my ideas are just playing in my brain. And now I'm going to start adding some ink using the Northern Shores um, ink set. And this is um, a set of blue tones. I'm going to say it has a little bit of... Um, of a tinge of red, so it tends to go a little bit purple, beautiful colors. But I love the combination of the teal with the blue. I had this idea, especially because the picture I'm documenting is of my 45th birthday. And actually it happened in December, so it was really cold, actually it snowed here in Toronto. So I just wanted to bring, I'm all about bringing feelings onto the page. So again, I'm gonna use the same technique. I'm starting with icy water and using my ink blending tool. I'm gonna start with the lighter color on one side and then switch into a darker color and that'll be winter lake. And then I'm gonna do one panel like that. I'm gonna do three panels out of the Northern Shore um, ink set. I'm gonna choose the top, no sorry, the three darker shades because I just want the contrast. And pretty much I'm gonna use all these panels on my layout. So you're gonna see that I'm looking at the colors, making sure that, you know, they do match. They are very contrasting by the complement each other because they have the shade of, I'm gonna say they're in the cooler tone uh, family uh, set. So once I have my ink panels, and you're gonna see that I'm gonna take it off camera because like I said, I inked three blue panels. I know that I'm gonna need um, two to create my borders, like my background. I'm gonna die cut one to put on top of the uh, seashore panel, the tealish tone. And then, um, so that's three panels of blue ink. And then I'm gonna cut another panel out of white cardstock because I'm gonna use it for layering. So I'm just showing you the idea that I'm playing with, like I said, is a soft diagonal on the background. Um, and then I'm just gonna give me space to add everything that I want. So I'm just 
I'm gonna put this aside, let them set completely. I'm gonna go ahead and ink another blue panel and then I'm gonna take it off camera and die cut everything at once. But I'm gonna show you how I did it. So one of the things that I received lately and I'm loving, I need to order more, is the Altenew double adhesive uh, pages. These are great pages, especially if you love die cutting, which I do, because um, it just helps you to adhere everything in seconds. So you're gonna see it's super easy. What you have to do is just cut a piece of the double adhesive uh, paper, just peel one of the layers, attach it to the cardstock, make sure you attach it to the B side of the cardstock so that you can cut out of the A side, which is the color that you wanna obtain. So I'm just gonna glue my piece of adhesive, flip it, and then I'm gonna use my dies to cut it. And then I already have images that I can glue straight onto projects or that I can layer. So what I have done outside of the camera is I have used the grid stencil to cut two panels one out of the blue inked the inked uh yeah the blue inked panel another one out of the white cardstock and the other two panels i actually put them underneath the ones that i was cutting so that i just get that soft definition of the cut without having the cut so i love the fact that you see the shadow of the die cut the kind of the beginning of the cutting lines but it's not cut through so i have that soft dimension and texture on the background now that i have that pretty much cemented my background i'm gonna go ahead and start building my florals for this i am using the layer wood flower die set and i did the, what i showed you i used double-sided tape to glue or actually yeah to add it to the back of my layers and i'm just cut them i cut uh, six flowers nine i think it's 12 leaves and then um i'm just gonna build them up for you i've built them a few outside of the camera but i'm actually gonna show you and they're very simple to layer this die is probably one of the simplest um you're gonna see that I'm just using the guide that comes in the front of the package of the die set just to give me um, kind of a, lay, a like a template of how I have to add my pieces. And there's little notches on the florals that are just gonna make it so easy to you, for you to layer. And um, I make sure that I picked up the colors that I had on the background. So you're gonna see a lot of icy blues, a little bit of teal, and then I'm gonna stay, Stay kind of in those two tones so I'm not gonna introduce any other colors I'm gonna bring green for the leaves and then but I'm gonna make the centers of the flowers I'm gonna make them in gray and I also cut some of the leaves and just little branches using the just leaves uh, die set out of gray cardstock so you're gonna see that all I'm doing right now is just using the layering guide to create my leaves super simple three layers and because I've added the double adhesive piece of paper behind them all i had to do is peel the backing and stick them in place takes no time it took me some time to die cut everything because i just have quite a bit to die cut so i did it in my big machine but everything else came super easy super fast so you're gonna see that i like i said i die cut extra leaves i cut extra flowers and then i use the just leaves die set to cut a few of those loose leaves and i stay within the gray uh, tones of for the leaves I just want to make sure that I have pretty much a very um, cool tone or cool palette of colors for this layer. So all I'm doing right now is just setting everything in place. So again, I am using double, double adhesive paper behind those panels um, that I used, that I inked, and then I just kind of mark with the stand with the die sorry and i'm gonna put them at the very top edge and at the very bottom edge i'm gonna stay within a half an inch of each other there's a little space in between and i'm okay i'm gonna cover that with that uh teal paper that i created so what i'm doing for the teal paper remember how i said i die cut i ink three blue backgrounds so i die cut one of them and then i'm gonna glue it straight onto the teal panel at the same time i actually die cut also one an extra panel just a wide um grid that a die cut i'm gonna say and i'm gonna kind of layer it in between the two um 
background panels i just want to play with the lines i want to add some dimension i want to add some texture this is going to give me some movement and also extra space to just bring all the florals that i have in mind so once i have that in place you're going to see that very simple i am using the lines of the die just to guide me and make sure that i have everything straight i'm going to back my picture with a piece of paper from the for the love of stripes set a there's a shade of teal there that i thought it was perfect for this after that i'm just gonna use two floors in each one of the clusters and you're gonna see that i'm gonna have put two at the top right corner of my picture i'm gonna put two um kind of underneath or tuck underneath that teal ink uh, panel that i created and then two more at the bottom of that panel and that creates my triangle brings all the attention to the center of the layer which is where my picture is sitting so all i'm going to do right now is just add some foam adhesive behind the florals i make sure that like i said i cut all my florals three out of like a blue a teal blue and then three out of like um icy blue kind of purplish tone so that they combine nicely with the backgrounds that i inked after that i'm gonna bring the just leaves um branches and leaves that i created just to help me add some of the movement i'm adding some foam adhesive behind it and here you're gonna see how um so a little accident one of the leaves are uh, kind of falls from my hand and already had foam adhesive and then attaches to my picture and i left it in the camera so you're gonna see how i save it and uh unfortunately when foam adhesive that is very strong uh, sticks to a picture it does not come off so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna bring the stamp conditioning eraser and then it's softly gonna rub that foam area and then you're gonna see that i'm gonna lift it off the table because i don't want to kind of uh, make it roll i want to shake it towards me so all the little pieces come off and then i'm going to continue with small little circles until i have pretty much all the foam away um all it does is kind of ball the glue and the foam so i'm able to take it but i don't want to just push it with my hand instead i'm lifting the paper and kind of tapping it against me so all the balls um of foam just roll off the paper and i know that i'm going to add something there because i just still have a little dot that i couldn't uh, take off so after that i'm just going to continue building my clusters i'm going to like i said add those branches from the just leaves that is just going to help me with the movement once i have all in place i don't want to add much you're going to see that there's quite a bit the floors are large so they take a lot of space on your layer but bring a lot of movement too because of how they are designed they just kind of on a sideways view so they just create a lot of movement and detail on my layout and it's a nice contrast between the straight lines of the background to those like you know define move um the leaves that are moving and also to the petals of the floral so i really love how this turned out so now that i have all my leaves and flowers in place i have quite a bit already going on my page i don't want to add much so to add um a sentiment or my title on this layout i am gonna use a chipboard sticker from the enjoy the ride collection there's a scripty word that says is happy and it actually has like a shade of green really it's not black i did not want to add black on the layout just because it's gonna darken it so this happy is actually a really dark green so i'm gonna add it at the bottom and then i'm gonna bring alphas these are just for my stash but i want them in white just to bring some of the whiteness from the page like i said i don't want to add anything dark because it's gonna just make it dim i don't want to want to brighten it up so the alphas that i'm using they're just little foam alphas and they're white i love the combination of the font with a scripty chipboard after that like i mentioned before i am gonna bring a little puffy sticker to cover the little dot that was left behind from my boo boo and then i'm just gonna add a little phrase sticker now here i'm just gonna add a little bit more pops of color so i'm bringing enamel dots i am bringing the cool summer dreams uh enamel dots and you're gonna see a sneak peek of enamel dots that are coming soon they are the glacier caves uh enamel dots and they'll be coming in a few weeks to alter you but they were the perfect color for my layout after that i'm using my fine liner to add my lines to journal right underneath that white grid uh, that i added on the background and that is it 
I love how this turned out, especially because I started with just white cardstock and just colored cardstock and built my layout from scratch, a one of a kind. And I hope you like it. As always, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me. Remember to check the blog or go to the shop to check all the materials that I use. Thank you so much for joining me and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I hope to see you soon. Take care, guys.